absolutely no doubt at the end of this video you will understand why Power BI is so awesome. You can do some incredible analysis, especially around scenario based analysis in Power BI that is historically just, I would almost say impossible. I mean, I, I don't even know how you would do this in, uh, in this way, in, in Excel for example, in this dynamic way. So we've got a number of steps to go through here, but uh, piecing them all together, you can do, you'll be able to see how we can do some really advanced stuff in Power BI. Okay, so we're gonna do some scenario analysis. What we're going to do, and this is a very common uh, common thing that you'll, piece of analysis that you wanna do in day-to-day -day analysis, especially around pricing. So understanding what sort of impact pricing changes would have to the bottom line, so to the total revenue you might, you might generate. You, you might wanna look at, well, what if we raise prices across all our products by a certain percent, but you also might wanna isolate certain products or certain product groups and see what the total impact of increasing or decreasing in that matter, the prices of those particular products. And then seeing well, what's the total impact? How is this gonna impact, say, our sales? And you could even take it down to, say, your products and your profit margins, etc. So we're gonna actually set up our model to actually achieve that. We're gonna shock, almost shock the prices of particular products and then see how that impacts the entire um, sales portfolio that we have. First of all, I'm this is what I'm showing you the sales table here, which is our fact table. Let's have a quick look at our data model. So we've got customers, we've got products, we've got regions, we've got dates, and here we've got our sales table. So somehow we need to isolate this unit price here, which gives us our total revenue, and somehow shock it with a with a, a scenario. Say we want to increase prices by 10% or 20%. We want to see what that impact is. Okay, so let's jump in and jump and work through all the different steps we've got to um, got to run through to make this happen. First off, you'll see here that I've, I've got a really simple measure here called total sales. Now this is just summing up the total revenue column. And the reason I put this here is because I want to show that this is show you that this is actually not enough to run this analysis. Because all of that this is doing is it's it's summing up this total revenue column. But total revenue is already is already taken into account this unit price here. So we need to jump back a level and somehow work out the total revenue, but use the order quantity and the unit price column instead. And we can do that with sum x. So I'm going to create a measure and I'm going to call it total sales, but I'm going to use sum x instead. And so I'm going to go sum, sum x sales. I'm going to say, go look at the sales table. And then for every single row in the sales table, I want you to go order quantity times by unit price. I'm gonna push enter, and to show you that we get exactly the same result here, but just for calculating in a different way, I'm gonna gr uh, grab the dates column here, and I'm just gonna get every date first, and then I'm gonna to go total sales, which is 108, which is which is uh, 108 uh, for the first date, and so on and so forth. But then if I grab my total sales sum x, you'll see it's exactly the same result. So just so I don't have to uh, format every single row here, I'm just gonna take the format off here. Okay, cool. So now you can see that we're getting the same result, but we're just getting it a different way. But this sum X is how we're gonna build out our scenarios because we can isolate the unit price here and, and we can now shock it. Okay, so we need to somehow uh, build in, into here uh, a percentage change in price. Now, it doesn't exist in our data model, so we have to create it. We need to create a new table which will um, which will show the price changes. So let's uh, price change, and then I'm gonna shock it by, say, 2%. I'm also gonna put 5%, and we'll go 10, 10%, 15%, 20%. Uh, percent price change and then I'm going to go load that in and so this is going to uh, this is creating a table for us it has this table has no relationship to our data model as you can see 
And the other thing we've got to make sure that we do here, we just want to actually change this into a percent. So we've got uh, our percentage changes now. And I can now bring this uh, price change, turn it into a slicer, and make sure it's a list. And now we have our price changes. So we, we can now make a selection here, which is what we want, because we want to be able to uh, run some scenarios and see well, what happens with 10%, 15%, 20%, etc. Now we need to figure out what our selection is. We need to somehow work out, well, if 15% is selected, we need to actually create a measure that, that harvests 15%. So I'm going to create a new measure called um, price change. And I'm going to go, if has one value, price change. This is not going to work, so because I've got to have a different name, pricing change. If it is, then we want to go, we want it to actually equal the price change percent, and if not, we just want it to be zero change. And I'll just turn this into a percent with no decimals. Now, if I drag this on here, you'll see that we are now getting the pricing change based on our selection. So we now have a measure which has this percent information in it. And if we select nothing at zero percent, so that's great, no error. And so uh, what we can do, I might actually change this. I'll change this to pricing scenario. Okay, so now we've got our pricing scenario percentage. We can now integrate this into our calculations here. So we can say instead of um, just the total sales, we can call this scenario sales like so. And we can go sum x sales table. Then we want to go uh, unit price times by one plus the pricing scenario, like so. So let's just make sure we set this up correctly. Don't need the column name in there. And then we want to times this by the quantity purchased. And then if I drag this in, you'll see that now we have this dynamic scenario sales based on the percentage change. So as you can see, if I select nothing, it's going to be exactly the same, which is which is right. And then if I select 5%, you're going to see that it increases per day by 5%. This is exactly what we want. Now, I want to show you a bit of a problem now, because we want to isolate certain uh, if certain products are increased, not the entire portfolio. So if I bring in a product name uh, into the canvas here, and then I drag total sales, and I turn this into a visualization. I'm just going to create this down here. Now, if we select, say, three of these products, you'll see here that it, it impacts everything. So everything, all the context has changed, and now we're only seeing the scenario sales for just these three products. But I actually want to see all, the impact to all of our sales based on just the pricing change of these three products. So we have to go through a few steps here to make, uh, to make this actually happen. The first thing we need to do is we need to, regardless of any selection made here, calculate what is the total sales. So we want to get, regardless of any selection, what this we want to get this result here that does not change based on the selection. So we can do this quite easily. So I'm just going to go all, I'm going to call it all sales, and I'm going to go calculate total sales. So we're still calculating total sales, but then I'm just going to go all products. And if I drag my all sales into the table now, if I select a product, you'll see here that it actually stays exactly the same, which is what, uh, which is exactly what we want. Now I also want to select, I want to figure out, well, what is the total sales for whatever selection I make? And only for this, the selections that I make. And so we could do this a number of ways, but uh, you could actually use this. But in this case, I want to, um, create a separate calculation just to make sure there's no issues there because what could, can happen is you can uh, have additional slices that come in and you just want to uh, and, and that could adjust the calculation and you want to make sure that filters are on or off the correct uh, selections so uh, the way we do we calculate that 
is by creating a new measure and we're going to call it selected sales and I'm going to go calculate total sales and in this case I'm going to go all selected products and so if I place this inside here now you'll see that as I select these sales it then gets uh, it's only giving me the sales for that uh, specific selection now we have the makings for this master calculation uh, where we can see the impact of our entire portfolio based on only changing the prices of a um, of a certain selection here okay so what the way we do this is we just use these measures that we've uh, we have uh, got here so all I'm going to do is create another measure and go to and I'm going to call this selected scenario sales and we've got our all sales but then we need a minus we need to subtract the selected sales because remember we're shocking the selected sales and then we need to add back the scenario sales so if you think about what we're doing here we're starting with this number here all sales we're subtracting selected sales so this is the sales with no impact uh, to it and then we're adding back the scenario sales because that's going to give us this result plus the scenario that has occurred so I'm going to push enter here and I'm going to add this to our table and so you'll see now that uh, this uh, let's actually take some of these measurements out so we've got all sales we've got scenario sales and then we've got now selected scenario sales so these these two columns here are really your main ones you're going to look at and you're going to see well if if nothing is selected the change here is basically going to be exactly the same as our scenario sales but if I start selecting some of these you'll see that it's actually different because this is if this is calculating the impact of the entire portfolio by increasing these products by this percentage so that's pretty cool right we're, we're doing some pretty cool stuff now and we can go even further check this out we can actually go actuals versus scenarios and so we can go all sales minus this uh, the uh, actually it's sorry selected selected scenario sales minus all sales and so we can add this into the canvas here and we can see well um, by increasing the price by 10%, this is the additional revenue per day that we that we would uh, have potentially achieved uh, over that time period. And say we actually want to we want to change the time frame. We actually want to add a different time frame in here. Uh, we only want to look at a specific year. So we only want to look at 2016. So we could add that in there. And we could even go one step further here. And we could look at, well, what is the percentage change? What is the percentage change of um, our, our actuals versus, versus scenarios? So I can create another measure and go, so percentage uh, change from scenario price from, from uh, so with pricing scenario. And all I gotta do is go divide actuals versus scenarios versus all sales or divided by all sales zero for the alternative result turn this to a percent and I'll add that in there and you'll start to see now the impact that the selections have so if you look at down this column here you'll see that at the moment it's 10 percent which is fine because we're increasing every every product by 10 percent so we're going to get an increase in sales for, for, for whatever selection we make but check out what happens when we when we only select certain certain products and you'll see here that the, the results are different and because and that is because we're only increasing the price of these three products okay so we've done a lot there uh, but but now we can actually set up some visualizations to actually make it make it look a lot more compelling. So the first thing we might want to do is we might want to change this uh, into a visualization which shows the difference between uh, the current uh, the total sales or the or, or all sales that we make versus the scenario sales. 
and every day seems a bit too much for me so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at it from a month and year perspective and it still aggregates it all up for us and then I might want to look at well I want to look at just the change so I want to look at actuals versus scenario and then I might also just want to look at my percentage change like so and we could we could also put in some let's put in some let's make some different colors here make it make it look a little bit more compelling like so and then we want to also add some data labels and we'll finish it off with some data labels on these ones cool so now we can actually dynamically look at any we can we can shock any of our products now by any price well, any price change that we have in our slicer so say for instance we want to we want to increase the price by 20% of our top four products I'm gonna push go go to 20% I'm gonna increase the top four products by 20% uh, and you'll see that the results are very different one thing uh, that we also probably want to do is edit the interactions of these visuals and we might want to add one more we might want to add one more card which gives us a, uh, a summary metric and so you can uh, create understand a, this scenario here as if we increase the top four products by 20% the overall sales increase that we would have on our portfolio is 11.9% and you could run this for one product you could run this for all your smaller products like so and you can do it dynamically which is seriously cool seriously cool so we've run through a number of steps there um, but they're 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 amazing steps you know what you can achieve in power bi this file will be available to download so you can see exactly all the different steps that we've worked through and how you can actually implement it yourself implement this yourself but hopefully you can see uh, like, like I believe that you know you can do seriously amazing things in Power BI uh, and do them in a dynamic and interactive way. Um, you know, discovering insights that just are historically just so so difficult to find. So hopefully you found this video useful and, and this technique useful. I mean, you can see ways that you can actually implement this in your own day-to-day uh, -day analysis.